Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Get Dirty Garage. Today, uh, gonna try and make a fascia, uh, try and finish off that front end. We'll uh, try and fabricate something out of thin air here. Um, but trying to get that concept of that split bumper down and the uh, fascia is kind of the last part of that. We got uh, got the bumpers on, got the, uh, got the grill modified again. And uh, so now let's try and finish that off with a, uh, with a fascia and we'll see what, uh, see what we can come up with, but got tons of work to do. So let's go ahead and let's get dirty. Is this thing on? Yeah. Well guys, today I'm going to try and tackle this front fascia. Um, try and find the right balance between aggressive and obnoxious. Uh, I think you kind of know what I mean. I mean, some of them look really bland, some of them are just obnoxious, they stick out everywhere. So, I uh, spent the last few hours with a bunch of old cardboard and way too much template tape and kind of came up with this concept um, it's a little bit flimsy but I built a built a little platform here just so that I know I got the car level and um, <laughs> this is uh, this is kind of the, the lowest that I really want that front uh, front balance to be it's a uh, about an inch and a half higher than rocker panels I mean I don't want it uh, completely dragging on the ground because I do want to drive this thing and um, every once in a while I might actually have to park it so I don't want to be bumping into curbs and things but um, so I'm thinking that that's a fairly decent balance I mean got a little bit of an opening down here and I think um, if we can blend that in that closes out the, the bottom of this and so the big challenge now is trying to recreate the uh, recreate this uh, mess <laughs> in uh, in metal so uh, it's got some interesting curves to it that uh, should be uh, should be tough to duplicate but we'll see what we can do so I think the first step we'll get this uh, get this cut off of here it's just taped on at this point um, well maybe actually the first thing I'll do is try and get an idea of how to structure that um, and try and build it kind of the same way that we did the back bumper with um, like the quarter inch rod is uh, is kind of a frame if you will and then uh, then skin it from there so um that's the plan so we'll uh kind of pick it up at uh, at that point but we'll see how uh how this art project actually comes out so we'll uh, we'll go from there all right well i think the first thing that we'll try is just Getting a uh, getting a bend to kind of go around uh, that corner there in the top um, should be should be pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm just guessing at dimensions at this point, but um, all I really want to do is I don't want to make it like completely squared off. You know that um, that I think looks gets to the obnoxious range so I'll put a few bends in it if possible make it uh, make it smooth something like that so we can actually then skin that without too many um, too many like sharp corners and things like that so thinking as we uh, as we go along we'll just be doing some some test fitting on the on the car. Um, see what uh, see what we can bend up here. So I'm just going to kind of play with this stuff a little bit. Um, 
a little bit of bending, a little bit of cutting, probably some tacking together and so on. Um, just want to kind of, like I said, duplicate this, uh, this top line here and then along the bottom line, try and get, uh, try and get at least um, a resemblance of that shape. And then we can kind of try and mount that frame to the car, refine it as, uh, as we need to, and then um, you know, kind of tack something together and see what happens. So um, I'm gonna continue on with, uh, with kind of this and really at this point just uh, experimenting a little bit but um, we'll catch back up after I get a couple things bent and see how far off we are and um, be able to kind of guess on how we put things together there so that'll be uh, that'll be next okay so I, I got the, the, the corners kind of bent they're kind of close enough for who it's for so I you know I think they're pretty much matched from side to side but the Top one and the bottom one here. Um, top one is a little bit, uh, a little bit more round than the bottom one. I'm trying to get that, uh, kind of get that contour to follow in the corners, and then um, hit that fender uh, kind of where I think it's got to go. It's got to go to this uh, sec intersection here. And then I went ahead and bent up these uh, funky looking things for the top. Um, that uh, gives us kind of the same contour and shape of the, the grill and that way we can kind of get a starting point to, to skin and again it'll get to those uh, corner points and so on. For this bottom I decided to make it more of a gradual curve. Um, I tried actually to start with I tried making it more square to match the, the grill opening as well, but that uh, actually looked up, you know, obnoxious and so instead of aggressive. So we'll go with more of a curve. I think that looks a little bit better, but you know, it's uh, gradual as I could make it. And that way we've got it all the, all the uh, at least the outside form, the top and the bottom. And that way we, we take uh, these corners and then be able to cut them off the right length and then get them uh, in the intersection point there tack them together and that way we can uh, you know at least get a uh, get a start at that so at this point i think we're just going to go ahead and slice off this template uh, like i said it's just been taped up here and it's more of a guide if anything um not really uh not really um i guess you know usable in any fashion but just gives a, a concept of uh, design so anyways um We'll get this sliced off. We've got to figure out a way to extend those fenders down and then uh, get a mounting point into uh, into corners there. But we'll get this sliced off so we can tack a few pieces together. And that way um, we should be able to, you know, at least get an idea, you know, going forward if this is even possible or not. <laughs> you know, I think there's a... Uh, a lot of different things that can go wrong at this point, but at least that gives us a, a concept. So, get this sliced off and uh, be able to at least. I think we can keep this around for reference and just making sure that we're kind of following what we think we want to. So, let's get this uh, up out of here. I think for for right now, we'll just throw it up on top here. Um, just have that as, uh, I guess, uh, inspiration, if you will. So, but uh, now we can take a look at uh, fitting these uh, pieces and kind of getting a, a frame together. I think at this point, um, really the key there is trying to get uh, these hung to a point where we can use them. So next step and is really just trying to figure out how to attach things in that fender area. I've got to extend that down a little bit, but uh, it's got a bunch of funky curves. So I just want to cut that off straight and then be able to um, have like a flat portion of tab welded to it and both uh, in the fender and the uh, fascia so they can bolt together. So we'll do that as the next step. So in order to tackle these fenders, I really what uh, I want to try and do is uh, I want to take, uh, it's, you know, with all these funky curves and so on, I really can't make a flush um, meeting between the, uh, um, the fender and uh, the fascia. So I want to take and cut this down in a straight line, remove uh, this uh, um, section of the pocket that we made as well. 
Um, so if we go straight down, that keeps uh, everything there. So if I make it uh, completely flat, that way, if I have the same surface on the fascia, um, once we bolt those two together, um, going straight, then they'll be completely flat and make sure that we get uh, get um, a good uh, gap in there. So let's get a hole. Let's go ahead and make the uh, sparkly wheel of terror and cut this uh, chunk out and then uh, go from cut out flush so I'm just going to take some cardboard and a pen and just kind of run along the edge of the, the fender itself so I get that contour to match um, and then that way um, once we have that we can make uh, make a flange you know somewhere something like about this wide um, that we can uh, weld or tack and make a kind of a square corner put a couple of holes in there for bolts to go through both on the fascia side and the uh, fender side but if it goes in there uh, nice and flat and flush that way if we make four of them uh, put one on the uh, on the fender uh, one starting on the fascia that way um, we'll kind of have a, a matching set and be able to uh, be, hopefully get a good uh, good line um, you know and being able to body work and put everything together and make it nice and flush as we go across there so I'm gonna make that a little bit longer um, get those uh, get those cut out and then uh, see if we can't uh, get something attached to the fender here so we'll go from there <laughs> Okay, now we've got a uh, bolt-up surface. Um, basically, start building the fascia off of this piece here. I'm going to grind this one down a little bit just to make sure that they're exactly the same profile. And uh, we will uh, start building the fascia from there. So, that's the next step. Okay, so I tossed the bumpers back on. Um, this part's going to be a whole bunch of guesstimating, basically. Um, my, uh, my thought is... I'm going to try and bring this line down so I want that kind of lined up you know so the bumper kind of sticks out the same from fascia and and uh, headlight buckets and so on so if I kind of get a good eyeball on that I think There's some place in 
in there. So, um, get a quick chop of this one. Then if this can weld on to there, then I will need about that much length. enough to get a start at it so what I want to do is just kind of attach this weak effort. So I can figure this out a little bit better than that. kind of a idea of where we want to be. Same thing on this bottom one. I'm going to tuck it in as close as I can, I guess, to those bumper brackets. I want a little bit of downward angle in here. should ideally run a little bit downhill that direction as well. So put a quick zap in here. think from there I can manipulate what I need to do to kind of put both sides up and together. And this bottom piece, I have to twist that one a little bit more I think. But 
this thing should give us at least a starting point that should clear. Yeah, I think it will, should clear this bumper bracket. So we should be in pretty good shape there because I want, uh, want that slope back just a little bit. So um, I will go ahead, rinse and repeat on the other side and try and get uh, at least these corners kind of blocked off where I think they should be. And then we can start putting pieces and parts to the center of that frame. So that's next. All right, well, I think I got uh, these center bars. I mean, I did throw in a couple of quick um, uh, verticals on those pieces just to keep them from flopping around and stuff like that and try and keep them in position. So just some temporary braces, but I think I got that uh, center pretty much where I want it. And so that will uh, connect across here. So we'll uh, zap that together real quick and then we'll try and throw this top bar in there and then get a couple of uh, a couple of supports. So let's see if we can't get this melted together here. Get them tacked in place. Again, this frame is just basically going to be a guide to how we're able to skin that, I think. So um, close enough is close enough. Let's see what we can do here. give us our basic frame now um, try and get a couple of a uh, couple of small bars in here you know try and follow the uh, design guidance I guess uh, from above and see how we can uh, manipulate that into place and I think the biggest thing at this point is trying to find and I think what I can do is um, there's a hole in the top of the frame on both sides and I think I can make like a, a small bracket that comes off that hole to hold you know hold it at, at these two points then we can probably come off of this uh, um, center grill support and hold up the the center of that if need be so um, I think uh, from a mounting strategy we should be okay so I think that gives us a starting point. Let's uh, put in a couple of uh, a couple of those little bars and uh, go from there. All right, so I got uh, got these uh, you know kind of these in between bars welded in, and I also went ahead and made a couple of little brackets. They look like this, uh, just out of some angle iron, and welded a, a nut to the back side of that, and put those right on top of the frame horns here. There's a slotted hole here. I'm not sure what it was uh, for originally, but 
Um, so those go on there and then welded to this, uh, this brace that I put in here. So now this, this whole thing is good and solid. May need a support in the center. We'll see how that comes out. But uh, at this point, I mean, it's uh, solid to the fenders, solid to the frame. So everything should be, uh, should be good to go there. So I think at this point, we should be ready to try and start skinning this a little bit and uh, see what kind of shapes we can come up with and how to manipulate those corners and so on. So, but uh, yeah, that, that, I guess skinning will be next. So we'll take on that next step. By the way, you know what? What is it that's worse than raining cats and dogs when it's hailing taxis? Okay, well, let's get some work done. Okay, well, I grabbed a couple of pieces of metal from the leftover pile and knocked some of the smudge off of them. Um, but here's my, uh, here's my thoughts anyway. Plan, if you will. Um, Take uh, and I'm going to try and form this corner first. Um, taking this piece and putting kind of this uh, this bend in it this way, um, and then what I will do is take this piece and then try and form from where that piece left off over to kind of this center opening. Um, so it's got fewer bends on it. Should be fairly straight panel. So. The one that's uh, most concerning to me, I guess, is this corner because it's going this way around the corner as well as this way. So we've got to figure out kind of how to, uh, how to put a compound bend in there with, uh, with straight tools. So, but I think, uh, I think we can figure that out, do a little probably a bit of um, cutting and sectioning and so on and so forth. But uh, if I look at kind of how that, uh, how that bend's got to go, And I gotta start. Somewhere along a line like that, um, because this is angled back here as well. So I'll put a, uh, take this over to the vise, put a uh, quick bend in that, try and get this fitted up just a little bit, and then we'll try and figure out this, uh, this curve to match the fender. So we'll, uh, we'll pick it up at that point and uh, Again, just uh, just making this up as we go along, so we'll see how that happens. All right, so put kind of a gentle curve in that one, and what I see that doing is kind of taking up that corner there. Now, since this is a uh, seriously compound angle, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, trimming and fitting and so on. A little bit more. And it gets us a start at that. So I'm going to start this by taking off this top corner here, like that held in there the right uh, angle of the dangle. So we'll get this leveled off here. Again, just going by, uh, just going by eyeball here. But we'll cut that little corner off. Sharp enough. 
One more try. enough to get a starting point I guess now for trying to match this uh, this curve here I think I'm just gonna try and manipulate this edge a little bit as you're forming sheet metal and so on you just kind of use what you got and I got a knee so So we'll take a couple more slices out, see where we're at. Getting pretty close. Already started here. Grab a pair of pliers if I can find them. I think we've got the basic shape 
of that corner. Let me uh, try and tuck a little bit top and bottom there, but mark the back side of this so I know where I'm kind of cutting off. that'll get us a corner piece at least something to uh, to start that process get a uh, quick Okay, so like I said, that gets us a quick corner there. I think we can at least um, do some fitting and conceptualizing from there. And then what we'll do next is try and bend up that centerpiece, or not centerpiece, but uh, this uh, section that goes through there. Got some angles to figure out, I think math to do so we can uh, try and figure out where where to put those bends in so we'll come back at that point and uh, see what we can come up with okay after a whole bunch of guessing and just the tiniest little bit of math came up with uh, with this piece out of the flat piece, I put two bends in it basically, one to take on this angle and then one to kind of finish that back off. And kind of carved out a little bit around where that grill opening or that grill surround goes. So I think this will give me a, at least a starting point. Um, and my plan is this, I wanna clamp this up I'm going to tack these pieces together, that corner piece that we made and then this piece. Tack them together, take them off, and then cut them both at the same time. So we got a uh, kind of a perfect butt joint there. Um, and that way we won't, won't struggle with getting alignment, I hope. And being able to finish off that weld in one piece. So let's see if we can get this kind of clamped where I think it should go.
Well, I think those bins are kind of in the right spot. Bottom's okay, I guess. So let's throw just a couple of quick tacks on these two pieces. And then we can take them off as one, um, make a mark down here, slice those off together and put that butt joint together. So let me just get a quick tack in here. those together I think we can just do a slice down something like something like that there's plenty of room on both sides so we'll cut that down there and piece those together um, yeah I think we'll have a starting point for that corner at least so we'll look uh, Pick it up at that point. Okay, so let's get us uh, one solid piece to get a trial fit on the car. So uh, we'll go back to that one and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's that corner on the car. Um, not, uh, not fitting too bad. I mean, this has got to be pulled in and so on while we uh, when we get the final weld but I think what I want to do just to try and see how this curve of the headlight bucket kind of tucks in I'm going to do the same thing on the corner of this where I'm just going to take a, a slice down kind of tuck that in just a little bit probably top and bottom Just a little slice in there and kind of tuck it with some pliers and weld that gap back up just so it's got a little bit of shape at the top and a little bit of shape at the bottom um, and I think that'll uh, that'll kind of look a little bit more like an original piece and so on but uh, um, the other thing I want to try and figure out is filling this gap here uh, probably just put a little 
triangular piece in there somehow, some way. So um, I think at this point we've got something that fits to the car, the shape's pretty good, and we'll just uh, work on some details in the corners and so on. So we'll go from there. Okay, to uh, kind of give some shape to these corners, like I said, I'm just gonna take a quick slice, you know, kind of in the middle of the curve and then just take a pair of pliers and kind of manipulate that around we'll see what kind of shape we can get out of it and then uh, just basically weld that back together so we'll uh, start hacking here We can just kind of tuck that just so slightly so it gives some shape. Open that back up. Okay, I think that'll be uh, close enough. I'll give it a zap in here. Next, just hit it with a grinder, see what kind of finished curve we've got on there. This will just give it a little bit more styling points, I think. Hopefully you can see from the profile, it just kind of softens that uh, softens that edge just a little bit. Um, looks a little bit more like something that would have come from GM, I guess. Um, so I'll uh, tweak this bottom one here, and we'll. Uh, and I did uh, did put a little uh, little tang on here, try to close out that little spot by the end of the bumper and probably do the same on the headlight bucket um, once we get to that point but uh, let me finish up this bottom and then we'll uh, zip that back on the car and go from there okay well I think I've got this corner fitted the way I want as you can see I put a little tab in there to kind of fill up the space where the bumper curves and got the corners tucked just slightly just so that it um, gives it just a little bit of a of a shape kind of matches and catches that line there if it's okay to the uh, fender got a little bit of work to do there but I think at this point I just need to rinse and repeat for the other side and then what we'll do is um, get these all positioned and then uh, just tack them on the back side so that uh, we can get them into position. And then I'll worry about the, the horizontal bars going across. So that will be next step. 
All right, so I've got uh, both sides, or I've got that side duplicated over here. They're pretty much the same. Um, and at this point, I think I got them in position where I want them. So I'm just gonna crawl under, do a quick tack on the back side in a few spots and try and get these secure. And that way, um, at least they can become part of the permanent fascia type, if you will. And then we'll, uh, we'll work on some crossbars and so on. So let's uh, just zap these corners in place. Okay, one down, one to go. I'll get the other side put together and then uh, let's uh, work on the crossbars over there. So, next steps. Okay, so I got these uh, center bars cut out. I cut this one about an inch and a half, this one about five eighths or so. Um, got them kind of clamped in there where I think they'll be okay. Um, I'm just gonna throw a couple of tacks on them and get them in place and then we can kind of figure out you know how to make uh, a smooth opening and so on so I'll just do a couple of quick uh, quick tacks here
Okay, so that'll get us started for the opening at this point. So we'll uh, do some measuring. I think that uh, I want that opening to go back, you know, maybe about uh, in the center here, maybe about five inches, something like that. So on the sides, it'll be a little bit less than that, but I also want that to go slightly up. Um, don't want it completely flat. So I'll uh, cut a, a strip out, maybe about uh, six inches or so wide, and we'll do some bending and forming and see what we can come up with for that, uh, for that bottom tray, if you will. So we'll uh, pick it up from there. All right, so I'm gonna start with this uh, about six inch strip. And I think if I put like the center of the bend, bends somewhere along there, I think I need a new marker. I think uh, we should be in pretty good shape. So I will put just a couple of bends in either side of this, try and get it so it, uh, it's making, uh, making a nice curve, I guess, and so that it kind of looks the same on both sides, and we'll kind of fit it up and see what's happening at that point. So we'll uh, try that. All right, well, here's, uh, here's what I came up with for some bends. Just uh, trying to make the corners kind of smooth and kind of even, but my thought is I can kind of slide that in there until the center matches. And then what I can do is trace along this outside get a cut line and then that way it should fit right up to the to that uh, that uh, opening that profile and that way it should be easy easy welding I'm hoping so we'll get this uh, guesstimated in here And then just uh, make a mark all the way around. That way, uh, as I cut along there, um, should be able to actually just shape that as I go and have a uh, piece that will butt up to the inside there and then really all I got to do is finish off this top piece and I kept the weld and we'll keep those uh, welds on some flat portions so I can finish them off so I didn't really want any inside curves to finish and so on because that's a little tough with a grinder but let me uh, let me go ahead and chop that off and um, see what uh, see what it looks like from there. All right, well, I got this, uh, this piece shaped out and fits pretty good. Um, one thing that I did not account for, I mean, slips right in there and those curves I think will be, be good, but what I didn't account for in the first cut was I want this bottom angled up. So I'm gonna have to cut these ends a little bit more. Try and get uh, try and get some angle in that in that bottom. So I think we'll do that again. And then that way, as uh, these are tipped forward, this will tip that bottom up a little bit. So I think that uh, will be 
what I'm after and then I can kind of manipulate these flat again. So um, we'll cut it off one more time, try it again. All right, so chop that off one more time. Um, probably still too short, but yeah, that's all right. Um, but I think what that'll allow me to do is once that's, uh, once that's in there, to be able to tip that up, bring those sides forward. Um, really fighting, trying to figure out how to, uh, how to actually hold that in place. So I think what I'll do is uh, put the cart before the horse here tack up this center just a little bit and then pull those uh, pull those edges in so we'll uh, we'll give that a try I think that gives us a little bit of a uh, ramp up, clean up some of this uh, some of this mess that I made here, and uh, get this tacked in place. And I think I can I can put this bottom section in when it's off the car, but this will give us kind of smooth curves, um, fill in these little gaps, and uh, that way we can um, kind of be able to see down in there but uh but this will act more of a, a scoop going up i don't know it's a little more stylish i guess so anyways we'll uh we'll zap a few more tacks in this and then uh clean it up a little bit and then we'll uh we'll take it up from there all right so i got uh got everything in tacked in place in the center there i think that uh our gaping bottom feeder mouth is uh yeah, okay, at this point we'll uh, do a little tweaking as we go along, but next uh, on the agenda is um, these cutouts here. Um, kind of laid them out. Um, they're almost the same size, side to side, almost. Pretty close. Close enough for who it's for, but I'm going to cut these sections out and then kind of clean up the corners with a, with a die grinder and see if we can't... Uh, get those matched up so that will be next task. Okay, so I think uh, that's the concept, uh, and we'll kind of do the same thing that we did uh, on the center piece, is kind of bend up a piece of metal to go straight back in there because this angles down and then also back just a little bit, so can't put it in there square or it's gonna be kind of pointing that direction, you know, 
I don't want it going that direction. I want it going this direction. So um, I'll get the other one cut out, and uh, then we'll um, figure out kind of opening and how to put some uh, how to put some finish in there, and uh, take that on as the next step. All right, so I got the holes cut out on both sides, and as we were talking about trying to uh, trying to form that shelf, I guess I don't know that inset thing uh, in there. I was going to try and bend up, kind of like the center, but uh, didn't have either the tools or the skill set to make it all in one piece. So ended up in a couple of pieces here. Had to do some uh, relief in the back for like the bumper brackets and um, you know radiator sport and various crappage that's uh, that's back there but my thought is since I couldn't form that all in one I can get these now I just when I when I bent these up I just did the whole trace around and, and uh, cut it out but I can put both of those sides in there and get like the if I was coordinated to do it all at once. So. Got the precise fit. So put both of those in there. kind of where I think it's got to go and that way I can tack this bottom together here make that seem smooth and then what I'll do is I'll tack those top two pieces together um, after I get that smoothed out um, tack those top two pieces together and then cut them off at the same at the same time down the same line that way it should uh, and then weld them back together so that way it should give us you know kind of a seamless look if you will so or all the way around so I'm gonna try and get a tack or two in this bottom and be able to fill that seam here Okay, well I think that will get us in the general vicinity. I think before I tack the top though, I'm gonna finish off this, uh, this bottom because what I found is that I can't get like a grinder in there to get this uh, smoothed out so I can uh, bend these top flaps up just a little bit and get a grinder in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get that uh, seam together and then we'll come back, tack them together, cut them off put the uh, put the top together so we'll uh, pick it up from there well I got uh, that seam together so now I've got kind of the four-sided thing I envisioned the first time as the epic fails that I tried with uh, putting those together but are been in that but I think where we're at now is in order to make this top seam, I can kind of get this in there and just uh, tack on one side of this. And that way we can keep those together while they're cut. Let's see here.
All right, well that gets us uh, one piece. And then, what do is make a cut right about there, and that way those will be uh, kind of exactly the right size or close enough to get it in there. And then um, I'll cut this, weld those, uh, you know, keep the this side and this side, and then uh, weld those back together. And then we should have a four sided. I don't know what you call that, octagon, octopus, I don't know what it is, it's poly, it's a shape. So we'll, uh, we'll put that together, let me cut this off, weld that together, I think I'll weld that from the top so I can get a grinder in there, um, and then we can obviously finish off the, uh, um, you know, the bottom side, or the top side while it's in there, we'll finish that in body work and so on, but um, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the vise and get that uh, welded up and then we'll slide that in there and kind of tack it together and go from there. Okay, so here's the full piece that I kind of get I, uh, everything together fairly straight, but at this point we can Kind of insert that thusly, and then what we'll do is we'll just uh, tack this in place. Um, and then once uh, once we get everything, we'll pull it off of uh, off the car and finish all the welding and grinding. There's going to be about a week's worth of uh, uh, pinhole filling and all sorts of fun stuff trying to get uh, trying to get everything smooth. I'm sure, but let's just. Uh, get this tacked into place and that way we can kind of step back and take a quick look see what we think ah, that was worthless just kind of aimed the right direction Tack in this bottom here and then do the top. Okay, well that gets us uh, at least a vision of all of that. So I think at this point, you know, everything's kind of tacked in place. Um, before, I, uh, before I pull this all off and try and do some finish work to it, um, obviously got to rinse and repeat on the other side here, but um, let's go ahead and try and get those, uh, those fenders extended down to meet the bottom of this. Um, because that's uh, kind of an important styling cue. So um, let's uh, let's go ahead and try that next. And that way, once we do pull this off, 
um, do all the finishing and so on when we get that back together are able to put it back on the car uh, it should be kind of finished I don't know so let's go ahead and uh, uh, I'll get the other side in and then uh, we'll go play with the fenders okay so here's the plan for the fender I cut out just this little uh, extension that basically will fit kind of right along the bottom there um, this tucks in pretty severely here so I'm gonna have a little bit of a divot there and my thought is is I can take a, a strip and kind of manipulate that around put that afterwards underneath there so that'll give me this inner lip I'm gonna leave this bottom lip of the fender in place because it's got a mounting hole for these little brackets that hold the bottom of the fender and those will go between there and the radiator support so it'll keep any uh, any floppage to a minimum so that's kind of the plan at this point this kind of fit it up where I think it can go and what I will do is kind of match that out to that bracket that we already built like I said this uh, tucks in a little bit a little bit more severely than I'd like but um, I think it'll be fine do a little bit of uh, body work but I'll tack this around and then I'll grind this edge down before I put the edge I don't know whatever that is before I put that in there so get that contour and profile in place so I'm just gonna zap this in tack it in real quick All right, well, got that extension on there, and you probably saw me blow through in a couple of spots on the fender, a little bit uh, thin and so on, but um, I think it, at this point, you know, it's close enough as we uh, do some body work, we'll smooth all that fun stuff out, but last step to this, I think, um, just uh, went ahead and bent up that, um, and should kind of tuck up behind there and what I can do is to uh, tack that on and then uh, do a weld and a grind and that should give us that bottom flange and keep that original flange in place which is kind of what I want to do for the fender support so I'll go ahead and get a couple of tacks in this see if we can't get it located like I think it should a little bit more benderizing
that should give us a start at that. We'll go around and uh, get that welded up and ground down. And then I think we'll, ready, we'll be ready to pull the fascia off and start uh, working on cleaning up welds and things like that, getting gaps correct. And um, I gotta put a little, I gotta put a bottom on it yet and probably some little flanges like this one that I did around the fender, around the top, uh, under the grill and so on. So it looks like it's closed out. So um, I'll get this on and cleaned up a little bit and then uh, we'll uh, pull that fascia off and start uh, start getting some stuff cleaned up on it. So we will go from there. Okay, so got this uh, pulled off the car. There's just the uh, six bolts that, uh, that hold it on at this point. So I think that mounting strategy should work, but I have a complete boatload of uh, welding and grinding and finishing work to do around all these openings and so on um, before we get to uh, trimming out the top and the bottom so let's get to uh, let's get to that and uh, see if we can't get this thing at least uh, looking like it's supposed to so sounds like fun Okay, well, apologize, quite a bit of time between last uh, clip where you saw me doing some grinding and, and this one, had to, had to really take a couple of days of uh, quality time. Um, you, know what, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you just, no distractions, one-on-one -on -one time, just making, you know, making that reconnection and so on. Had to spend that quality time with the welder and the grinder because uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of area that uh, needed to be done did get all of uh, the inserts in there also put uh, this top lip on there plus uh, a bottom portion of that so feeling uh, I was feeling pretty good about uh, where we were at <clears throat> Then kind of step back and taking a look at it, admiring my uh, handiwork and so on. But then I realized, yeah, forgot the turn signals. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, got to have them, even though most people around here don't use them. Um, I think you're supposed to have them. So we're going to go ahead and get those in. Um, obviously, we've taken away all the uh, provisions for turn signals from the original bumper and so on. So trying to figure out a plan on how to do that and uh, so I wandered off to the to the jungle and got uh, got these little ditties they are LED strips that uh, can flash yellow and my thought is my plan is is that I can put that kind of along just between the top edge and that uh, that opening there um, but I obviously don't want to mount that from the from the front because then it's sticking out so my think my thinking is I can mount that from the back and just cut a opening so once this is mounted to the back um, just the uh, LEDs will be through on a little strip so that's the that's the plan um, so we'll see how we can uh, how we can execute that I've got this kind of laid out where I think that those need to go um, so I'm gonna drill a couple of holes 
on each side and then that way that'll give the ends um, you know kind of a nice uh, nice curve because it has a curve to the end of the blinky thing so um, but drill a couple of holes and then just do a just do a slice in between them so we'll see how uh, how accurate we can get the uh, get the holes drilled here Okay, so we got the ends there. Just use kind of a straight stick. See if we can't uh, connect the two dots. And then this should give me a guide to run the uh, sparkly wheel of terror down. See how uh, see how straight I can make it with that. All right, straight lines here. Okay, so that should give us a uh, an opening. Do a little bit of uh, sparkly tear here. See if we can't get these slots cut out of this finely finished piece of sheet metal. Get a spot for the turn signals. Okay, here we go. Well, now we've got a couple of slots opened up. So at that point, I think we should be able to mount those in behind there. Without too much fanfare. We'll uh, figure that out here in a minute. But um, let me get these, uh, these holes uh, cleaned up, dressed up a little bit, and then we'll, uh, we'll figure out some mounting for those. So. Stay tuned and that's the next step. Okay, for part two of the ill-conceived plan on the turn signals, I've got, uh, got the slots cut out, clean those up a little bit. Got them clamped in place, um, kind of where I think uh, they should go. Um, got them centered and so on. So my thought is this, if I go in from the backside um, and drill a hole, through the uh, through the fascia here, I can then put uh, like a number ten screw through uh, both of those, um, bolt those in place, and then tack that screw on the outside. Uh, just tack it in place of the welder, and then pull this off, um, weld this screw in place to the fascia grind it smooth so it can finish it out, but then that'll leave us with a stud that we can slide, uh, slide those uh, turn signals on and off. So that's the, uh, that's the thought and the plan. So we'll, uh, we'll knock a couple more holes in this thing and, and see if we can't uh, execute that something or other. So wish me luck. Okay, so if that, in place. And get that fastened up with a couple of bolts here.
Just kind of temporarily hold that where I think it should go. Yeah, so that should give us Close enough for who it's for. So that should give us a, a start at that. Um, I'm gonna put the other ones in and then we'll, uh, we'll zap those in real quick um, just from the outside. And then uh, we'll take all this stuff off so we don't melt it and so on. And then try and tack it from the, uh, from the other side um, and then grind those, uh, grind those heads off smooth. So that'll be what's, uh, what's happening next. Okay, well I think that should get us, still probably a little warm, but that should get us a, uh, a spot where we can mount those in from the back. Comes out just about, uh, just about flush on the front. So, and almost even, that's always a good thing. But uh, yeah, I think that's exactly what we're looking for there. And we can get those uh, mounted up, but at this point I'm just gonna, finished doing some sanding on this um, and then I think we're ready for a quick coat of primer I think so um, we'll do that next um, get things kind of buttoned up and then see how this whole piece of sheet metal uh, actually fits on the car so do a little bit of hoping and praying at that point but I think we're in pretty good shape so uh, I'm gonna go throw some primer on and uh, we'll pick it up from there Okay, I'm gonna throw a quick coat of epoxy primer on this because uh, at this point, um, got it finished to the point where my mediocre uh, body work skills can take over. So, um, putting epoxy on and then we can do the body work right over the epoxy so I don't have to strip this again. So, rather than doing a rattle can, we'll do it up once and do it right, so.
Okay, well that'll get the first coat on. We'll let that uh, tack up for 10-15 minutes and throw a second coat on and then uh, should be ready to actually try this thing out on the car. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, got nothing. Okay, well, we've got uh, primer all cured and on there and uh, again, it's uh, at least to the point where my mediocre body skills can take over, I think, so. Let's see if this whole piece of uh, sheet uh, metal actually fits up to the car and do a quick fit. I got, uh, got the turn signals in and so on. So and this kind of slides over the frame horns. Thusly, get a couple of bolts in this thing. These go straight up through the center. They go straight up through the hole in the frame. Not the easiest ones to get started, but at least they're accessible. side hardware. I had debated on making these studs and so on, but I think I want the uh, adjustability on both sides of this. Almost there, I promise.
not super uh, super solid with the mounts that it's that it's got so I think we are good to go without any center support you know a few a uh, few things there but oh wait forgot the uh, forgot the coolest part just uh, wired up these turn signals real quick just to kind of take a quick look well let's give this a better shot Ooh, we got blinkage okay so I think at this point we are pretty good to go um, basically gonna have to do some body work on getting everything smoothed out and so on but that's to be expected so no major uh, no major questions there but we'll step back and take a quick look here okay so stepping back taking a quick look um, this is really kind of a, as we extended those Fenders down, gonna make that front end just a little bit lower, maybe an inch, inch and a half, something like that. But got the uh, turn signals kind of integrated into that. And I think, you know, that front portion looks aggressive, but not obnoxious. So that was kind of what we were after. When you look at the, uh, the whole split bumper concept, if you will, um, it gives us kind of an idea of what uh, what the front end should look like and, and I think we can get it finished in finished up and kind of blend it in uh, we'll put uh, you know continue those body lines on out but gaps look pretty decent at this point um, did the uh, little fillers in the corner of the bumper so it's kind of uh, um, you know contoured up to that shape and I think I'll probably do the same thing on the uh, on the headlight bucket to try and make that match up in there so I think overall pretty pleased with uh, with the way it came out the way it looks so we should be uh, should be good to go those uh, signals blend in pretty decent I think so um, Gives the uh, little indication, but yeah, pretty good. So I think at, uh, at this point, um, we've pretty much wrapped up the fascia, wrapped up kind of that whole uh, split bumper concept. So we should be good to go. Um, now it's time to uh, tear this all back apart and actually start uh, building it up from the ground up. So. I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. Um, hey, listen, I think that's gonna do it for this edition uh, of Let's Get Dirty Garage. So um, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, see what, uh, see if you think we pulled off enough of the split bumper concept to, uh, to make it at least cool. I don't know, but I think it is. So anyways, yeah, leave me a comment, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. We really appreciate the support, appreciate all the, uh, all the comments, all of the, we read them all, have a great time with them, try and respond as much as we can. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think, and uh, I really appreciate you guys getting dirty with me today, so uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.